Hey, what's up guys, Lyndon here. And if it is that you're looking at this video, it's probably because you're getting ready to start creating reports in HubSpot. But before we go about creating a report, I wanted to give you a little bit of a preamble first. And that preamble is this. A report is a graphical representation or it's an output based upon your inputs. Now, what does, what does that mean? That means that when you are looking at a report, it means that the report must be pulling from somewhere. So if it is that you are looking for a report on your deals or on your marketing activities, your social media activities, your contacts, how, how frequently your contacts are coming in, it means that you have to have the, those things set up in HubSpot's deals, contacts, those respective objects first and set up the right way so that you can start seeing the reports that you are looking for. So again, your reports are the outputs of what your inputs are. If you're running a marketing campaign, it means that your marketing campaign must be set up the right way or connected the right way within HubSpot so it can give you the graphical that representation at the end. If it is that you are looking at certain things as it relates to the type of contacts or the frequency of your contacts that you're pulling in, it means that you must be capturing some of that information so you can filter what it's job title, demographic, whatever it is. Those things must be set up in HubSpot so you can pull that data so it can represent itself on your report. If it is that you're looking at certain things as it relates to your deals, the type of products and stuff, it means that all of those things must be set up first so that the report can give you what is it that you are looking for. So again, as you're getting ready to move into this stage, please make sure that all of your respective properties are set up the right way in the respective objects so that you can get the report to help you grow your business. But well, the objective of this video is to show you all how you can go about building reports like these. So what you're seeing here is what we will call our marketing and web analytics uh, dashboard, but it's also to help you navigate to and understand where you can find the reports. Um, this is a dashboard I'm going to be switching to. So this is what you will call a sales dashboard. Uh, so I'll be showing you where you can go to find um, these reports so that you could actually build the dashboard. So what you're looking at here is a dashboard and these are the respective reports inside of that dashboard. All right. So once you have the report that's actually set up, you will navigate across to where it says reports. And in this section, you normally have a few things, right? So you have an analytics tool and based upon the version of HubSpot you have, you will have a sales analytics a report that gives you a plethora of different reports that you can actually pull in, right? Or you also have a sales contact analytics tool that will help you understand, or you can use it to be part of your report as well, and that will help you understand what um, bits of content or sales material is your are your reps using, whether it's templates and documents, etc. Um, or you can actually come straight down here to where it says reports, right? So if I were to click on where it says reports, it's going to bring me to a section where there are some pre-built reports that I would actually own. Um, so these are initially some of my reports. However, if it is that you're looking at building a report from scratch, because there's also saved from library, but if you're looking at building a report from scratch, one of the main areas you will come across here to say create reports. And when you get to this section, you'll see a couple of things. In this example, we're going to be looking at a single report. However, when you get a little bit more complex in terms of the work that you're doing and the stuff that you have happening in your CRM, then you could actually you now start building your own reports. You can put certain things together if you have certain sales funnels that you want to measure. And if you want to look at things like marketing attribution in terms of what, what marketing campaigns would have generated the most amount of revenue, if you do have the marketing hub or to a certain extent CMS Hub Pro in both instances, you will be able to track certain levels of attribution. Right, so if I were to go further down, you will begin to see that a list of different reports are actually coming up, right? So you can actually begin seeing certain things that's actually happening here. So these are just a list of the reports that HubSpot already showing you. So this one is saying, you know, blog post views and bounce rates. Again, it's based upon what is it that you're looking for. And so far it's going in a little bit of an alphabetical order, all right? Now you could search for what is it that you wanted to search for. So I can say um, contacts. Right, so this will show me all of the reports that has the word contacts in it. So this is one way, 
right? And then there's another way where you could also create a filter. We're not going to use that so much so now, but we're going to go straight into where it says data sources, right? Now, HubSpot is actually going to be scrubbing through some of your objects, right? So based upon what activities is happening in your CRM, remember that your dashboard is an output based upon your inputs and activities, right? This is where from the CRM standpoint, so there's a little header for each one. So CRM would represent contacts, target accounts, deals, products, revenue, subscriptions, forecasts, tasks, meetings, etc. Right. So if let's say, for instance, I wanted to look at contacts, this will actually start bringing up different reports that represent this. Right. Now, when you see visualization here, now HubSpot did make some adjustments in terms of how the wanted people to be able to customize their own report. I personally don't fiddle with this too much, but when it says customization, it really means what do you want the report to look like? So this is just, again, uh, an output, a graphical representation. So I can say a vertical bar, horizontal bar, etc. But again, for the sake of this example, we are just going to stick with what we have as default, right? Contacts created by source. So this is a little bit of a, of a, of a marketing side, but if it is, let's say, for instance, you are bringing in contacts from paid social, um, organic social, direct traffic, etc., etc. Apart from it saying offline, uh, it would actually now give you a list of what those are here, right? Contacts created over time. So you're seeing the growth of how your database has actually been growing. And again, understanding to what would have been the driving factors that represented this growth in terms of the activities within that within a specific period, right? So as you're looking at this, remember this should also represent data and that this data represents activities, whether it's sales or marketing or service activities to, to give you this. So you will have an understanding as to what's happening based upon what your business is, right? Again, and we can go further down. So let's just switch this a little bit. So we want to clear, notice that when we did this, it's, we want to, this is a filter selected. So we want to clear this filter a little bit. Um, so we don't want to look at contacts. We can look at companies, target accounts. If it is that you want to pay attention to certain things like target accounts. And this is also now based upon if you have target accounts set up in your CRM. So again, you have to have it set up properly in your company's section first to be able to give you the output. So you can see what activities have been happening based upon the accounts that you've actually been targeting. Um, deals. So if it is, I would have click on this, it will start giving me a report on all of my deals and revenue forecasts, etc. Um, I, so I could choose more than one, right? So if I'm looking for a report that shows deals and also revenue, this will be, so notice it's deals and revenue. It will track those things here. So there's a dollar value here and who it's actually coming from. And if you say you have teams, this will tell you who are some of the leaders in the teams. So when you scrub through, you will actually see certain reports that you might think represents what you are doing. If it is that you're looking at a report that represents certain product lines, I don't have any product lines within here in this demo, but this will actually spit out, okay, which products are actually generating the most amount of revenue because you can click revenue and products at the same time. So it will spit out those bits of information for you. Let's, let's go a little bit further to see what it has. Um, inbox, inbox would represent conversation. So if it is that you're using Service Hub a lot, or if it is that you're actually using web chat, um, so this is going to represent the chat is Facebook Messenger. So this is going to show you the activities on those particular areas. Marketing campaigns and call to action. So again, if I were to choose any one of these, I do not have any sort of data set up in this, but this is where you will be able to find those things. Excuse me. Um, your websites, web pages, this will tell you your activities along those lines. Um, as we go along, automation, sequences, how well those things are actually working. But how do we know, let's, if we stick in with this first one, how do we know, let's say we want to get this report. Um, if I were to click on this report, this is now going to give me the ability to make certain adjustments. So if I come across here, this is going to see the original source. If I click, I can now adjust. So notice where we said, um, before I was saying, where did this come from? So if I choose... I want to see paid search, email marketing, etc., etc. It means that this is going to look for all of those things. Now, if you don't have data that represents that, it's not going to give you the information. I've been saying that a couple of times. But if you know that you are going to be doing certain activities that represent that, then once you have those activities running, then HubSpot is going to pick those things up for you. Um, create date. Um, this is important. 
but you can choose options in terms of whether you want to use life cycle or which stage in, your, in terms of your customer life cycle. I'll talk about life cycle stages in a different video. But again, you can manipulate your, your report once you understand what those things are. So create data is normally a good standard to, to work with, which, which, which yeah, a good standard to work with. Then you also have things like rolling date range. This is how you want to you do it. So a rolling date range would represent um, a continuous flow of a 30 day period. So 30 days from this day. Right or 90 days from this day, excluding today, or you can say, Well, show me for this month, and it's going to your report is going to adjust. Show me for well, not so much so next week because that could be meetings, but show me for last quarter, and you'll see that there may be some information here that's last quarter. Now, when you do have information, once you have this and you realize, Okay, this is what I want, you can actually save this report. And then HubSpot is going to say, okay, do you want to add this to a new report? So this is how you can use this first report to start creating a dashboard. So you want to add it to your dashboard now. So I can say, or you can choose an existing dashboard if you do have an existing dashboard. And you can add it to an existing dashboard. You can just not add it at all and just create it as a report and save it for the future. Here's where you can customize the name of said report. So we want to call this test report. Right, and in this instance, I'm going to put it on a new dashboard. So I'm going to click next. Right, I'm going to give it a dashboard name. So we're going to call it test new dashboard. All right, and now I'm going to save and add. Now, when I do this, um, let me try this one more time. Right, there we go. Right, so now it's telling me, okay, I can go to the dashboard. If I click go to dashboard, it's now going to take me to this brand new dashboard that I just created. So this is test dashboard and this is all of my other dashboards and here I can drag this out I can make it a little bit bigger um, excuse me and if I were to drill down if I click direct traffic right I can see who were the people that came in through the respective sources and who were the people that were offline because you could you could drill down in your reports right on the card itself <clears throat> excuse me you can um, filter your dashboard in terms of date range, owner, teams, etc. So if you click on any one of these, you can choose whatever is necessary for the respective report. Or you can actually go back in from here and you can customize again to suit. In terms again, your organic search. Um, and if you make certain adjustments, let's say for instance we adjusted this, you can save this as a new report if you want to track this particular bit of information separately from what you just did. Or you can just update the existing reports. It's only going to show you month and date. Customization would mean that you're going to look at how do you want the report to graphically represent itself for you. But as I say again, that's not 100% necessary, especially in this example. This is all subjective to the end user. So if I were to click cancel, it should take me back to the actual dashboard. Uh, but this is how you go about creating reports in and a dashboard in HubSpot uh, based upon what it is that you would like to see.